27 gallons. Oh. Check it out, guys. You were looking at my first ever mailbox that I built. Pretty sweet. It's temporary and they're gonna throw it away in like a month when the real one gets installed. But I'm still proud of it. The project manager here was like, hey, I got a four by four by 10 and can you build me a mailbox out of it? I said, hey, I, I can do anything with wood. You bring me the wood, I'll make it happen. I'm, I'm just not digging the hole for the mailbox. You understand? And sure enough, I got him to dig the hole. <laughs> and they say project managers don't work. What the? <laughs> Look at this guy digging ditches. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it didn't quite go down like that. We, It's just a team effort. But in all seriousness, I am proud of that mailbox. It was a really easy build, obviously. But I just went to the USPS website, and they've got regulations on there, how far back it needs to be from the curb, how high the box needs to sit, so when the guy drives by and drops it in, yeah, it's just pretty easy, but something else I'm a little bit more proud of is some stuff we got going on in here. So let me show you. We are always the first ones on site here. You know, these guys say, hey, you're making us look bad, but you guys are making it easy to make you look bad. So if you guys caught the last video, you know the entablature is now complete and we're moving on from this room into the next room. We've done some other things between random things like building a mailbox and some other stuff I'll probably share with you later. But this is really the next detailed area I wanna share with you. So let's take a look at it. So as you leave that room and you come into this room, this is a more scaled down room as far as moldings. That's kind of the big feature up there. But in here, we don't really have a whole lot going on. We're gonna have a three piece crown that is an exact match of the top of that entablature. So those last three pieces that we stacked up there, we're gonna just have that up here. But it's gonna be a little tricky because our reveals above our doors and windows, and here it gets really tight. So we're gonna have to like, basically take out material out of each molding. So that molding will still be the same look, but it'll compress and it'll get smaller. So that's gonna be fun. We're gonna have to dado and wrap it out of moldings and kind of get them to sit down on each other and still get the same look because we don't have that room. Now the other fun detail in this room is this little wainscot or big base. I've heard it called both ways, but you can see that cap there that ties in with that top tread. Okay. And that's where we determine the height of that. So this whole room ties together based off the stairs. So pretty cool, 18 inch overall. And then this right here, this drywall, that's actually gonna be basically representing finished wood. So this will all be painted white, all this trim here, and then another color up here to get the contrast. Now you can do that when you've got a level five finish like this because it's super smooth and the painters can work their detail and really sand this down to make it look like it's wood, make it look like a finished surface. Now you cannot do that if you have textured walls. I get that question a lot here in Texas. We have orange peel and knockdown textures. And if you put some applied molding to the wall and then you just paint that texture, it looks horrible. So you definitely need to do skim coat to get it to at least like a level four, level five finish and uh, make it where it's nice and smooth. So it will look like wood. So that's essentially what you're trying to do. You're trying to make it look like a nice sheet of plywood or something like that. And if you guys have been following along, you know we had some casing on here and we had this complete, but there was a design change where they want this jam to be extended more into that room over there. So we're changing that out right now. Thankfully, it wasn't anything that we did. So it was just a design change and we're just switching it up. So that'll be an easy fix. But one interesting thing about this whole deal going on here is I had to cope each and every one of these caps into the casing and check this out. This took some time. So if you look at that, how that cap is like profiled in to the back of that casing. You can see it's, it's a pretty tricky cut. I use the multi-tool, I use the angle grinder, I use the coping saw, I use some files, and I was able to work these in. 
So I had six in total to do, but this is how they came out and I'm really pleased with it. That gives us a nice sharp 90 degree paint line right here. It lets this casing kind of accept this trim piece right here, this cap, without just doing like a hard edge or like a back cut. It makes these two go together and makes them look like they're harmonized because in here we're not using a back band because of the issue that we have up here where we have very little clearance for our crown. This is probably the most intimidating room we've worked in so far. This is the Georgian room as I call it because you can see it's got these thick Georgian moldings over here. Just absolutely beautiful stuff. So cool guys. This is, this is just outstanding. You've heard me talk about this too if you've been following along. So here's the Georgian moldings that we actually installed on the other side of the room here. We installed this piece of chair rail here. That should be it, but we'll definitely put a level on it. If you can send that home right there, we are going to be good. I don't think it gets any better than that. Yeah. And a lot of this stuff is damaged, guys. You'll be able to see it. I'll show you here in a minute. But they've got a master carver from Ukraine named Vasil who's going to come in and just tidy all this stuff up. It's restoration work. It's salvage stuff. It's going to be damaged. So keep that in mind. Don't be a holier than thou when you look at this stuff. But check that out. That is a crazy cope joint of chair rail there. So we installed this piece. The cope was already there, so that made it a little bit easier, obviously. Then you installed these plinth blocks down here. And then we have our Georgian casing, which we were able to make this work. It was a pretty crazy, intense moment cutting this stuff. This stuff came out really good. My favorite view is right here where these two come together. That is just too cool right there. Look at that. It's not every day you get to install something that was installed 94 years ago. I mean, that's a crazy thought. When this was originally installed, the installer did it 94 years ago. Stunning, absolutely stunning to me at least. So it's crazy guys. Now we've got this piece of base over here. It's actually a three-piece base. And the carved piece is just a cap. We've got that right here. You can see that it's almost like a panel molding, but it's a base cap. And then these pieces over here, Vasil, he's actually gonna be making these custom for us um, and tying this back together. So this was all that was left of the salvaged material. So basically what we did is we took a picture of this and he's going to continue the pattern based off that picture. And I think he has an actual sample as well because that would be pretty crazy to do it just off a picture. But we gave him a picture of this. That was our job. We gave him a picture of that. So he'll be able to carve the rest of this in 
into that cap. All right, guys, there you have it. Some updates on what we've been up to. I know this was a little bit of a different video. I didn't really show how to do anything because honestly, I don't really know how to do what we're doing. John and I are just figuring this out, but I'm telling you right now, it is a big boost of confidence and a pivotal moment in our careers to be able to work in these environments, be able to install these types of moldings and the challenges that they're throwing at us. So it's cool, I'm enjoying it. We have a really cool piece we're about to get started on upstairs and unfortunately it's not in the time frame to record it, but I'll show you some footage of it. It's a five piece crown. We're gonna be installing this in the master closet. We pre-assembled it because ultimately it's like a four and a half, five inch crown. So we can cut it all in one piece with the miter saw nested rather than doing it in multiple pieces like we did that in tablature. So we're gonna to try to knock that out, but I did wanna give you these updates and show you what we've been up to because it's just pretty cool stuff. So as always, thank you so much for watching guys. I appreciate it. Appreciate the genuine comments, questions. Leave them down below as always, but other than that, we'll catch you guys on the next video.